Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit of a black screen there is because Moltar has already fucked up this morning and forgot to pull down his green screen and turn on all the lights. <sighs> Jeez. I don't, I don't know how I function. I don't know how I do this. I don't know how I'm still alive. Anyway, 
Gold League again, ECV 56 taking on Dragon Squadron. Dragon Squadron is the home team. This is going to be Guadada taking on Krimps. Krimsk. So, what's the word? Coastline. Couldn't think of coastline. Coastline location today. Obviously, it's Gold League, so there's going to be AWACS. Um, but I anticipate big things coming out of both teams. Dragon Squadron is all 16s. ECV 56 is a mixture of 16s, 18s, and 14s. So all NATO coming today, but 14s really came in round three of yesterday's matchup. Will the 14 carry on today? Will it have an impact on today's match? I don't know, but again, today is going to be ECV 56 taking on Dragon Squadron, Krimsk against Guadada. But first, let's check out Thrustmaster Super Cup brought to you by Alpha Whiskey. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are here riding along with ECV-56's Ducko. I think we are at Wadada down here in the south. Dragon Squadron is going to be departing from Krimsk up in the north. But uh, how is everybody doing today? It is not F-16 against F-16. It is F-16 four ship from Dragon Squadron. Two, sh I think it's two 16s for ECV-56, a singleton 18 and a singleton 14, I think, is what the matchup is going to be. Oh, Robski had only 16s. Yeah. Well, I don't know what to tell you there. I. It was cool. It was cool. I liked it. But I can see how that would be a little, a little misleading. Let's see. So we get a 16, two 16s. All right. So let's talk about who is flying. Let's flip over to view two. Dragon Squadron is being represented by Proton, Rapolo, Predator, and Colmelio. And then on the ECV-56 side, we have Chueco, Fortinero, Ducko, and Praetorian. Praetorian's in the kitty, in the F-14. Will he be neutered, or is he going to bring the fangs to the game? What are your guys' anticipations on this one? I don't know. I want to say the F-14 can be a bit more effective in Gold League uh, than it can in Diamond League. Less aircraft. I can imagine it to be difficult to have to think every verse all the time. Mago, it's not difficult. I'm just one perpetual fuck up after another, though. You need to realize that my life is just walking into one screw up into another, right? That That's how I roll. That is the Moltar way. So even if it's easy, I will screw it up. That's just how it goes. I will forget. And even if I've done it a million times, I'll, I'll screw it up. It'll just, it, it just happens. It is the way. It is the way. Anyway, you guys have accepted that about me, I think, I hope. I'm a good man. I'm a good man because you don't know me, right? Right? I don't know. Maybe I'm a good guy. I'm just here to have fun. DCS, I stream to you guys not for any reason other than I think the community enjoys it. That's why we do this. We're not in this for the money. We're not, there's no money to be made. <laughs> ha, ha, but. 
We're in this to bring something to the community. All the money that the stream brings in goes right back to making the stream better. Um, I mean, we, we've gotten four cameras. The audio's gotten better. The webcams have gotten better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys like the... F yeah, you, you, I know you guys like that. But anyway, we live in Spain, but it is si silent. What's silent? Spain silent? What does that even mean? The selfies are bad. Yeah, the selfies are bad because I'm ugly. I know. It's just something you guys have to deal with. I try to bring smiles to people's faces. That's what this is all about. Okay, smiling. Even if it's you smiling at me being dumb, that's what it's all about. In today's age, with all this shit going on, sometimes you just gotta have a smile on your face. And if that's me being stupid, then that's what has to happen. I can hear these guys' engines spooling up. Proton is rolling. And Predator is taking these guys. We'll be taking out the second two ship for Dragon Squadron. And then Chueco and Ford and Arrow are rolling for ECB 56. Why is the F-14 more of a Gold League fighter? I don't think it is. I just think it it's more effective with less aircraft in the arena. Because the situational awareness from the uh, the F-14 isn't as great as the other NATO fighters, the other Gen 4 fighters. The, the F-14 is more of like a Gen 3 and a half. I don't think its situational awareness is as great as like an F-16 Viper or an F-18 Hornet. So when you start introducing more aircraft into the arena, it really suffers. At least that's that's my take on the whole thing. What are your guys' thoughts? Do you think it, chat? Do you think it excels? The F-14 excels with less aircraft, or do you think it excels with a six v six mon uh, matchup where there's more aircraft in the arena? I personally think it it gets bogged down, in my my opinion. Calvary says he lives in pain. Silence. <laughs> Can't tell if joking or or serious, but I thought it was funny nonetheless. F-14D definitely would be the exception. Heepler, make me an F-14D. I will fly nothing else. Needs to happen. Diamond, you got six targets, only 454. So glad it should be more effective due to it being for 4v4. You can really put pressure down if you had a good F good 14. Good point. Maybe next year we do six Phoenixes for the Tomcat and Diamond League. Maybe that's something we do. You know, four for Gold League and six for Diamond League. May I don't know. What, how does... Chat, what do you think about that? Is that a possibility? I don't know. I do not know. Is... Are you not around? Camera, what are you doing? There we go. Anyway, everyone wants the D. Uh, duh. Bigger is better. Don't tell my wife they said that. Robski says, gotta use two of them to be able to use the four properly though can't get to speed prop yeah you gotta that's something we were talking about yesterday robski is that the 14s that were flying in yesterday's matchup weren't getting in my opinion to a high enough speed they were uh launching their phoenixes from under like mach 0.7 which you need to remember that all the energy that you could gain as an aircraft when you launch a missile is then directly imparted onto the launching the launched munition so something to be be thought of 454s and two sparrows has more drag than 650 really how that doesn't make any sense the f-14 is or not the f-14 the 54 is a massive missile how is that even possible how do you subscribe using Amazon Prime? Well, you got to make sure Amazon Prime is linked to your Twitch account. If it is, you should have a uh, the subscribe button. If you click it, I think in there, there is a button to subscribe with Prime. Somebody in chat can probably elaborate that a bit more, but I'm pretty sure that is, that is the process. You have to link Amazon with your Twitch account, though. But you're not reducing the wing drag because... The sixth, the fifth and sixth Phoenix go in the place where the AIM-7 is. And I would think that the AIM-54 
is more of a draggy missile than the Aim-7. No, no first-person cameras today. They, there weren't any submitted. First-person cameras are kind of going to be a testing thing this year. I'm going to use them when I can, and the next year they're going to be a requirement. I need to make it easier for teams to be able to upload their first-person cameras. So right now it's kind of a hodgepodge. They have to send them directly to me, and it just it's kind of messy. So next year, like with how the teams are uploading tracks and things like that instead of me having to do it, I'm going to make it easier for teams to do that. So next year we're going to have many more first-person cameras and hopefully many more available on stream. So instead of having four cameras, um, I'll have two for the outside planes, then we'll have four to six for the dedicated first-person cameras. At least that's my overall goal. Now, I'll probably need a 3090 or multiple 3090s to be able to make that effective, but, you know, we're going to we're gonna try. We're going to try. I got to wait for the 3090s and stuff to even be available. Not even available. My 2080 Ti for right now is doing okay. It's doing all right. So, again, this is Krimsk taking on Guadada. A little bit of an air gap between them. I think it's about 150 to 200 miles separating the two air bases. Uh, something else I need to point out is that this is a weapon restriction. So 120Cs are allowed and Mark 60s are allowed. None of the, those ghetto 120Bs are Mark 47s. That is true about the same spots, but I think you can carry 9Ms with a 6 loadout. You can. And you can carry 9Ms with the... Uh, Aim sevens, right? Unless I'm missing part of this conversation. Like the the Aim nines go on the outside pylons, right? And then the inside of those pylons go uh, for the Aim fifty fours. But I'm com is the drag coefficient for the Aim seven really more than an Aim fifty four? Oh, it carries five and six on the outside. Does it carry the AIM-7 on the inside? Is that why the... That doesn't make any sense. I'm confused. I'm still confused. But I confuse easily. You guys should have realized this. .NET says 3090s are more available than others. That they are, but they are still being priced at a premium. I, I think they're like $1,800 or something which is ridiculous. Okay, that's what I thought, Robski. That's what I thought. I just did I don't understand how the 7 is has a higher drag coefficient. Aim 120 being launched by Rapolo. So here it is, cruising. Who is this going on? No one. Rapolo, where is this missile going? Oh, it's targeting somebody. 75,000 feet. .NET says, run a scraper bot, check stock. It's how I got my 3090 from Zotac. Yeah. I don't have that amount of dedication. Flying Wombat asks, in the rules, does the F-14 have to have both players for the Rio and Pilot spot? In Gold League, it does, just as Robski said. Or sorry, in Diamond League, yes. In Gold League, it doesn't. Uh, but this missile is actually getting a lot closer than I thought it would, and it's still at 1,500 knots. So not a bad shot, but Praetorian does a good job of getting away from it. Aim 54 up here, coming in onto Rapolo, 1,300 knots for this missile. Don't think it's, excuse me, something got into my nasal passages. Um, don't think it's going to have any potential on reaching its target. Is the AIM-9X allowed in gold? No. AIM-9X is not allowed in any league. And the weapon restrictions are the same in both leagues right now. The only difference 
is gold flies with four pilots, diamond flies with six. Some of the diamond missions have no AWACS. All of the gold league ones do. And um, diamond league, you are required to have a human Rio. And you're as, don't, man, I got in a motorcycle wreck, like, going on four years ago. Sometimes I worry that I'm going to have a brain aneurysm. Just out of nowhere. Because I get really bad headaches. Sorry to go morbid there. I get really bad headaches. In the back of my mind, I'm always like, am I dying? Mago, it may be. The reason I didn't is because I wanted to make it more approachable. The league more approachable. At least that was my, my mindset for the whole thing. Predator launching a 120. Not sure who that one's on. A lot of missiles being launched from a long way away. Fortinero responding with a 120 of his own. Then we've got another 120 coming from Camellio. But lots of these missiles are coming from distance. And this is a distance of like 27 to 30 miles. So I'm not a huge fan of these these long range range missiles. Let's jump to Ford and Arrow and take a look at what's going on with him. He does have a 120 coming in on him. He's not defending aggressively, he is diving. He's Mach 1.2. Don't think he's in any danger of this missile being able to catch him. Missiles at Mach 2, and as he goes through this turn and forces the missile to bleed energy, it's gonna be totally out of gas by the time it gets anywhere close to his position. Let's pause this. Okay, so we pause this, and something that I'm looking at up here, this missile's getting quite close to Camellio. I just didn't want to miss it. So let's see what that missile is doing. Where is it? There it is. Change the music. And it is coming. Where's Camellio? Where is he? This thing's like straight down. I don't think it sees him. No. Oh, there he is. Okay, so there he is. Give you guys a view of where he's at. Missile's coming straight down. It's at 900 knots, so it's got a chance, though it's small. Here we go. So here it comes. E ooh. Ooh. I wonder if people realize that these missiles actually get this close. In real life, would that missile detonate if it realized that it couldn't hit him? and try and cause some damage, some shrapnel damage. What would be the cause there? Like, would it, would it detonate? Aim 54 coming off from Praetorian. There she goes. And where is she on the map? Aim 54 from Torian, there she is. Let's grab this. So here comes the AIM-54 that Praetorian just launched. Can't tell who it's coming in on. We like to ride along with the AIM-54s because they've got the highest amount of potential. Went up to Mach 4, over 50,000 feet. Now it's decelerating and descending through 48,000 feet now. Looks like it's on Rapolo. We can see him rapidly descending through his contrails. He broke through contrails now. He is at Mach 1.2. This missile doesn't have a chance in hell of being able to run his ass down. He's going to be able to get away from it just fine. Just getting some cameras set up. And we can, we'll can we ride along with it for a little bit longer. Mach 2.5 now, 26,000 feet. It's still got a mock over Rapolo, but he's still cold, and that thing's not going to catch him. I'd like to see him doing a little bit of a, a bob and weave, some serpentining, to see if he could bleed the missile out of energy any faster, but he's just going to maintain a cold aspect. Something that I'm a little worried about, totally change of mindset here, or topic, is look how isolated Praetorian is down here to the south. Look how isolated he is, and he double taps on Fortinero. I don't know how I feel about that launch. He's only got, let's take a look. How many missiles does he have? He only has four missiles. So he double tapped there, launched two of them, went from six to four. Why double tap in that situation? Why? Just single tap. You know, you're instead of wasting one if it doesn't hit, 
you're wasting two. Single tap. Unless you're in close against an F-14 or something and you're worried that he's not going to go down in one. That I can maybe get behind. Single tap! Don't get why people quote Wiki for this stuff. If you don't have good info, don't spread it. Don't have Wiki on what? I, did I say something wrong? I don't really re read Wiki outside of like... Uh, um, like airspeeds and stuff. No, they talking about me. Oh, well, are you a wiki connoisseur? Oh, you say you worked in the U.S. Marine Corps. Okay. Okay. Anyway, let's jump back. To the TAC view view here. Nothing going on. Both teams very standoffish. Nobody wanting to commit into making something happen. Chueco getting in a little bit deep here. Launching a 120. Can't tell who that's on yet. Possibly on Predator. How many 54s do we have left on Predator, or on Praetorian? We got two. Two 54s, two AIM 7s, and two AIM 9s. So we still got some juice left. Still got some reach out and poke people. Some telephone poles to send people. He's recommitting. He's a bit faster than we saw the guys in yesterday. I'd like to see him kick it into full blower. He's at 23,000 feet, Mach 0.9. And this may be the first time we see a potentially dangerous shot coming from anybody in today's matchup. This, we may see a Phoenix coming from inside 20 miles onto Camellio or Predator. And I like the positioning. He's recognizing nobody's looking at him right now. Are we going to see anybody on the left recommit? Well, he may be breaking away now. He is breaking away. Not launching. I like that he felt like he didn't need to notch. I don't really like that he's split essing. I would have liked to see him just take a nice saunter turn left or right to conserve that altitude. Um, he did get some airspeed back, but conserve that altitude. I mean, that split S cost him over 10,000 feet. So just saunter around, you know? Do a... a uh, What's the word I'm looking for? A 180 there. No use to split S there. Just saunter around if you think you don't have anybody coming on you. Oh, he may have split S because of this 120 that's right here. It may have picked him up. That may have been why, even though it's not a threat. But in the cockpit, you don't know that. Still five, four pilots remaining for both sides. Nobody really a huge threat, though Praetorian is thinking about making things happen. And he is coming in on either Predator, Proton, or Rapolo. I can't tell who. 120C being launched from Proton. He is the trailing element here, now the lead element. And that 120 is going to be on Chueco. And Praetorian recognizing he still doesn't have any anything to worry about. Still in here hot. Launches an AIM-54. We'll grab it. And I think that one's going to be on Praetorian. Where is it? So let's grab that AIM-54. This AIM-54 looks like it's on Praetorian. Let's go to split screen because this thing is going to have some energy by the time it reaches its target. It was launched from about 15 miles. We got Praetorian on the right. Pr or sorry, Proton on the, on the Proton's missile. Proton on the right, Praetorian's missile on the left. Jesus Christ, Multar, get your shit together. And he is having to defend. I don't think he gets away from it. And the telephone pole flies up his tailpipe and removes his wings. And Praetorian is the first casualty of today's matchup. Let's pause it and take stock in what is going on. So, three pilots remaining for Dragon Squadron. Four pilots still remaining for ECB-56. Who is in a bit of trouble here? No one. Praetorian recognizes he's got a threat. He breaks away. 0.9 Mach. I would have liked to see him a little bit faster, but he is low. So let's look at where Praetorian is and how he's doing with those missiles. Here's Praetorian running from those incoming threats. They're still four miles behind him, and nobody else is really in any danger. Fortinero actually has a really good position up here to the north against Camellio, and he is 11 miles away. I don't really like that shot. 
20,000 feet to 4,000 feet, 11 miles. It is a 120C, but neither of them is very fast. Ford Enero is at Mach 1.1. Comelio is at Mach 0.9. So Comelio is not going to contribute to the closure rate, really. He's not too slow, but he's not too fast. I would have liked to see Ford Enero wait. He has the altitude to be able to turn that altitude into energy via split S. I would have liked to see Ford Enero wait maybe two to three miles longer because Comelio is so low and his missile would have to have to climb through the thicker air to get up to where Ford and Arrow is. But let's hit play, see how this is going to go. There's potential for this to work if Comelio doesn't defend immediately. So here is Comelio's point of view right here and that missile Comelio is not defending he waits till the missiles four miles away and that thing's got some smash one mile half mile face mile Comelio dies immediately after his wingman of proton goes down and he eats the trees squirrels ninja squirrels claim another victim and he goes down so I thought it maybe had some potential for an arrow evidently knew better than I and made something happen out of that shot, but I think a big part of that was Comelio not defending until late. That is unfortunate, but we're down to a 4v2 now in this situation. Let's pause again and take stock in what's going on here. Nobody on ECV 56 is any type of danger. I think a big part of this is because Dragon Squadron is losing guys in one-off situations. We had somebody up here isolated. That was Comelio, was by himself. And then we had Proton isolated in the center. So there's no detriment to ECV-56 pushing the envelope as long as they launch first or have the longer stick. So in these situations, they launched first or had the longer stick in both of these, and they were able to capitalize them on them without reprisal. So now we're down to Rapolo and Predator, the only two remaining pilots for Dragon Squad, and we're gonna hit play again. Looks like Rapolo is trying to make something happen, he coming head on against Fortinero. Here's Fortinero, they are 15 miles apart. Du Ducco launches a 120 from about 15 miles on Rapolo. Rapolo gets the missile warning, breaks away. Here's the 120 coming in onto Fortinero. Let's jump to Fortinero's view. There's Rapolo breaking away. Ford and Arrow here on camera two, and he's not even aggressively trying to do anything to defend against this missile. He's just going to out energy it. Where is it? Should be right above him, somewhere in here. He's now diving. Missiles about co altitude. There it is. And he may start to do a bit of serpentining to bleed the missile out of the remaining amounts of its energy. Great defensive maneuvering by Ford and Arrow, recognizing I don't need to be overly aggressive here. I can just put it in burner, full blower and just do a nice snake to get away from it. The missile's going to be trash. So well, well done by him being able to keep his energy up. He stays above Mach 1. Well done there. Both Predator and Rapolo are now coming in. Both hot. Everyone from ECV-56 is cold with the exception of Ducko. Ducko is the only one hot currently. Praetorian is recommitting. Praetorian, I think, has still one AIM-54 remaining. Ducko launches a 120 against Predator, but that's not going to be an issue because Predator immediately breaks away and I think is going to be able to line of sight that Predator. You got to watch for your lights, brother. Lights! Got to watch for your lights. And evidently my, my chest is invisible. We need to fix that when we go to break. But 120 coming in onto Predator from Ducko. That missile's not going to have any, any energy by the time it reaches him. Predator is defending aggressively. I think he needs to realize that he doesn't need to defend this aggressively. He can be a little more saunterish or I guess just less aggressive. I'm having difficulty finding words today, but just less aggressive in this situation. He's expending a lot of energy right now and a lot of countermeasures when he doesn't really need to. Now Praetorian and Ford and Arrow are hot. Ducko and Chueco are regrouping down here to the south. Praetorian puts an AIM-54 out, and that is going to be on... Looks like it's on Rapolo. So here's the AIM-54. Let's grab it. 
There it is. So we're on camera three. Here it comes. 1,900 knots. Is it going to track him? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Up, up, up. Oh, it barely misses him. Line of sight at the last moment or notch. Something. But that aim 54 was deadly close. And Rapolo gets damn lucky to be able to survive that one. So let's pause it and take stock of what the situation is again. Rapolo. Back to the tack view. Rapolo, by the skin of his teeth, somehow is still alive. Linus sighted the missile for a split second. I think he flew through the notch just for a moment. The missile spazzed out, didn't know where he was, and was it missed him by feet. Like, under 50 feet, that missile missed him. Proximity fuse maybe would have, de I don't know, would have detonated if it knew it wasn't going to hit its intended target, but he got extraordinarily lucky against that AIM-54. Now we have a have a head-on fight coming between Predator and Chueco. This one is under 10 miles. Predator's at 10,000 feet. We've got him on cam camera one, so here's Predator. I'm going to bring Chueco up on camera two. Uh, Chueco, Chueco, camera two, Chueco, camera two. So here is Chueco on camera two. Boop. There it is. He's just launched an AIM-120. This is a deadly shot from inside nine miles. If Predator doesn't react within the next mile, he is in trouble. Another thing that's going to play into Chueco's favor is that Predator isn't all that fast. So if he tries to out-energy this missile, he's going to be dead. He needs to notch or line of sight. Those are his two options. Out-energying this missile is not going to happen. I think he's too slow. So let's hit play, see if he's able to get away from this one. I think he's going to have a hard time doing it. And here comes another 120. He hasn't defended yet. He's now defending. Split screen to be able to see this. He's not out energying it. He's trying to make something happen. And boom! That missile finds its mark. And I think we need to pause again to take stock in what is going on with the overarching remainder of this match. As Rapolo is the only one remaining. His wingman Predator just got smashed through the cockpit by a 120 from Chueco. And Rapolo is the last hope for Dragon Squadron against a four-ship, a four-ship from ECV-56. Here is Rapolo's aircraft. Let's hit play and see how this is going to continue. He is trying to make something happen. That is really close to... Oh, no! And Rapolo gives up the ghost and flies into the trees, says, I've had enough, or the ninja squirrels lassoed him and pulled him down. I think Rapolo is... Rapoyo? Rapoy, is that how you say it? Somebody enlighten me. Trees always win. They're like the ground, right? Always the winners. Jet versus tree. Typically tree is going to win. I say typically because, you know, maybe a Russian jet is going to be able to, to make something happen. I don't know. We've seen the Russians go. Their jets have done some, some crazy things, hitting signs and all kinds of stuff. And making it home. We're dead though. <laughs> oh man, clairvoyant. I I I like your spirit. So Rapolo. Right? Rapolo. Am I not saying it right? I feel like I am. Anyway, let's fast forward here a bit. For these guys to RTB five times turn the volume down a smidgen and ECV 56 makes it out of that one guys without a casualty and it looks like they ended the round they didn't have to RTB without a single loss That's going to be a tough one to come back from. That is going to be tough for Dragon Squadron to contend with. When you don't kill a single combatant, that's got to be demoralizing. Rapolo is Spanish word. Two L's in Spanish doesn't sound like it. Rapollo. He's... Soikis, Soikis is right. 
I think it's Rapoyo. I think. More like Rapacho. I everybody's telling me different things and I don't understand. Somebody, Gandalf, you're from his team. Enlighten me. Enlighten me. Just give me the gospel word. How do I say his name? I do me. Yeah, but I'll do me and people will hate me because I'm pronouncing all their names wrong. So, please enlighten me. Anyway, let's jump to round two. I'm going to send you guys back to the Supercut. Then the Be Right Back screen. Japan, or Japan, thank you very much for the sub. Much appreciated. Been back for two months. Thank you. Much appreciated. I'm going to send you guys again to the Supercut, like I just said. Then the Be Right Back screen so I can get round two set up. We will be back with round two. Here in just a moment, Dragon Squadron taking on ECV-56. Will Dragon Squadron be able to equalize to one round apiece? We are back. I am getting hit, ready to hit play. And we're only back because I hit the wrong button. I didn't transition that very well, but here we go. ECV-56 taken on from Krimsk, riding along with Gandalf. There's Chimongo in the F-14. Chimongo made some things happen in that F-14 with those big sticks of the Mark 60s. Production is 10 out of 10. Uh, production is a 10 out of 10 failure because it's a constant state of failure. 
I'm just glad that you guys live with me and put up with my failureness. Gandalf says re is pronounced like re from rent after po show. So reposho? Reposho. Like that? Am I doing that right? Or am I continuing to to screw this up and embarrassing myself as a dumb American? Is that what's happening? It's what I feel like's happening. Everyone has bad word days. Flying Wombat. My life is a bad word day. It's not one bad word day. 365 days a year is my bad word day. Okay? Get on my level. I'm sure some of you are on my level. But I envy all you guys from around the world. Most of you guys not from a predominantly English-speaking country, no other languages. And it makes me envious because I'm just this guy that speaks English because it's more convenient for the rest of the world and I don't know any other language. It makes me feel kind of dumb. Even Maybe that's not the case, but that's how I feel. Bad words make the world a better place? They do. They make you feel better. Like when you just go off on obscenities, like fuck shit. It just, it just, the endorphins spill out and they make you happy. See, Mike Lansing's on board. He knows what's up. What are your guys' anticipations for round two? You think we're going to see a lot of the same coming from ECV 56? Or is Dragon Squadron going to be able to redeem themselves? Are they going to be able to come back and make something happen? Oh, language and words are ever-evolving. They never cease, never stops. Like when YOLO came out. Such a dumb. Maybe I'm getting older. Only live once, I'm gonna step out in the traffic because I'm a moron. <laughs> Do you have the new Twitch thing called Predictions? What the hell is that? Am I being made fun of? What the hell is Predictions? Is that betting? Oh, you can vote using channel points. So it's like what we're doing here with voting or with betting, but it's in Twitch. Oh. That's cool. I like that. I'll have to look into that. I know really nothing about Twitch. I just stream on it. I don't know anything about the ecosystem, about the culture. I just stream on it. Just a dumb guy that likes virtual airplanes. That's all I do. So you guys are probably a lot more hip than I am on this stuff. I think I probably have to turn it on. I just didn't know that was a thing. I also need to create a stream team. Since I'm partnered with Twitch, I can create a stream team. I need to make one. Though I don't know what I would do with it. Like, what's the point behind a stream team? What do you do with them? Do they just make everybody feel better? The other thing I'm working on is uh, emotes. I've got some emotes that are being worked on. It'll be a couple, like a week or two until they're done. But hopefully they're going to be they're going to be solid. We're going to start with five, and then we're going to move on from there. So first five things like telephone pole, face smile. Maybe a, an explosion or ground or something like that. You know, important things that we need for this channel. Flying Wombat likes finding new things out about Twitch. I do too. But I don't actively research them. Or seek them out. But I do enjoy new features and utilizing them. That's nice. And I like being able to learn how to do new things, like run multiple cameras in DCS. I like that. Oh, other users can stream on your channel? Oh, that's cool. I didn't know they could do that. 
That's actually something that could be beneficial. Hmm. If people want to. What I wish Twitch would do is if other people streamed on your channel, that those people got the, uh, the subscriptions to the channel, right? That they got the money for the channel instead of the overarching channel. That would be nice. So it's not a host or raid, only members of your stream team can do it? Okay. That makes more sense. Flying Wombat, how is this match won? Is it two or three? Well, I'm not telling you how this match goes. I can't ruin things. What is this? Anyway. Separation between the two teams is down to 50 miles. We are well within Mark 60 range. There will be a flying telephone pole. That That's going to happen. First missile off the rails. It's Raposho. Raposho launching a 120. He is very fast. Mach 1.5. That thing's going to have some kinetic energy by the time it reaches its target. Here she is. If she decides to track anybody. Where are you going? Missile. We're still climbing. 87,000 feet. Still going. Wants to be an astronaut. Still climbing. 95,000 feet. 1,500 knots. 100,000 feet. Still going. Man, Elon Musk should have taken stock in this 120. The efficiency is mind-boggling. 110,000 feet now. Still going. And I feel like we're increasing our climb angle. 100. And 20,000 feet, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we're starting to... No, we're not. We're not starting to do anything. Okay, enough with the missile. Oh, no! Okay, we caught up. Enough with that missile. So 120 now being launched from Tuaco down on to... I think that's on Camilio. I think that's on Camilio. I'm anxious to see if the F-14 from Chimango does any more damage. Is he going to be able to make anything else happen? He did make some things happen in round one. Is the F-14 going to continue its onslaught of badassness, unleashing the telephone poles of doom at his adversary's faces? Will he be able to make it happen? Both teams being much more standoffish than they were in round one. Navy Doc thinks Killer Cats is going to make it happen. Chimango's a solid F-14 pilot. I'd like to see him utilize his airspeed a bit more. Separation between the two teams is now 35, 35 miles. ECV-56 is... I'd like to see them press. Everybody from Dragon Squadron is now cold. I'd like to see ECV-56 press. Utilize this advantage. Get in here. Instead, Predator is recommitting by himself in an F-16. Or thinking about recommitting. Predator is... Here's Predator. Predator needs to turn his lights off. But Predator, again, is thinking about recommitting... Now he thinks better of it and is breaking away. Maybe he's trying to get a flank on, but you are going to be seen at 40,000 feet. Roposho is now hot with Colmelia and Proton, so everybody with the exception of the first hot contact of Predator is now hot into the ECV-56 side. If we take a look back at the TAC view, everyone from ECV-56 is hot. Separation between the two ship of Fortinero and Chueco is 13 miles, not a bad position. Fortinero puts a 120 out, can't tell who that's on yet. We can ride along with it. Hopefully it'll be a better experience than Raposho's missile. Here it is. 
So we're going to ride along with this 120. It's at 1,500 knots, 32,000 feet, and ingressing onto its target. Looks like it's tracking Raposho, and don't think it's going to have any impact on this match's outcome as it's going to be out of energy by the time it reaches its target. Now 24,000 feet and Mach 1.65 and falling. I want these guys, Chimango and Gandalf, to be further up. I feel like they're too far away. They're 17 miles in trail. I think they need to be closer to 8 to 10 miles. This is just a bit too far to provide mutual support. I think in Gold League, you need to be more compact, closer together, to be able to pounce on opportunities as they present themselves. When you have less pilots, closer together, I think, is not on top of one another, but 20 miles, in my eyes, is just is too far. I think you've got to be be closer than this. Jamongo and Gandalf, though, continuing to press. Everybody from Dragon Squadron is now cold. I think that information needs to be relayed to Fortinero and Chueco, and they need to recommit and come in hot. Shimongo now putting an AIM-54 out into the wild. There it goes, going to camera one, we can see it. There goes the AIM-54 skyward, coming through Mach 3 at 42,000 feet, ascending and accelerating. The Mark 60 does burn, I think, for 30 seconds, or is it a minute? Something like that? It's a long time, I think it's a minute. Coming up to Mach 5, 52,000 feet, Mach 5.5. And, and Comilio, or Predator, whoever that is on, is going to be in for a world of trouble as that continues to ingress towards its target. This thing, 2,200 miles knots, Mach 3.7, 55,000 feet. Looks like it's coming in on Predator, Predator. You're in for a bad time, brother. You're not defending. You're at 40,000 feet. Let's go to split screen. Don't see the missile yet. It's going to be above him. He's got his lights on, so he's going to be like a beacon. Why did you wait to launch a missile, Predator? That is a bad idea. No. Predator trying to defend it. He just gets demolished at 40,000 feet. Guys, you cannot wait to launch a missile when you've got a Phoenix coming at your face. You are going to die every time. Missile, stronger than plane. That was a solid Phoenix. But I think the reason it was such a solid Phoenix is because Predator turned into it. When you are in an aircraft, explosions in your face are bad. That is not something you want. Chimango, continuing to make things happen. Predator, the first casualty for the ECV, or excuse me, for Dragon's, Dragon Squadron. He goes down. Raposho cruising in at 18,000 feet. Why does Dragon Squadron have their lights on? Turn your lights off. Another Phoenix being launched from Chimango. What is the state of it? Let's go back to tack view. Who is this one chasing? This Phoenix is on... Can't tell yet. But there she goes. Who is that Phoenix on? Who is this Phoenix on? We're riding with it. Looks like it's on Proton. Phoenix is at... 1,300 knots indicated, Mach 3.2 and decelerating. Target distance, I can't tell. He's getting closer, Mach 2.5. I think Proton is going to be able to get away from this one. Maybe. He's not defending, but he's not going to be getting a missile warning. He's not going to be getting a missile warning right now. So let's jump to Proton's point of view here. Do we see the missile? There's the missile. It's still five miles away. And it's just slowly coming towards him. There's the missile warning. He realizes his gig is up and he needs to defend. The missile's going to try and stay with him, but he's not going to be able to. The missile's not going to be able to stay with him as it is down to 300 knots. And Proton is faster than the incoming threat. Let's 
So well done by him. Recognizing that he needed to make something happen in order to get away from that. Camilio, means, meanwhile, is putting a 120 out. I think that's on Fortinero. Let's go back to Shimongo. He's my man. Got to keep him, him in the picture. I think the Tomcat's still got some things to do. He's been making things happen. He's still got two Phoenixes left. I think he's still got potential. He's still got the telephone poles on board. Everybody from Dragon Squadron is now hot with the exception of Colmelio. So nobody's died yet. Or excuse me, one guy has died yet. Predator's gone down, so it is a 3v4. Rapolio and Proton are hot. Camilio is cold, now recommitting. Try and get you guys a better view. Chueco and Shimongo are now hot. Fortinero on the west coast is recommitting. Chueco doesn't have the distance or the big stick like Shimongo does, but puts a 120 out anyway, and that's going to be at a distance of around 17 miles. Proton still hot. 120 coming in at Mach 3.2. Let's get Proton's view here. Here's Proton. 120C is now down to Mach 2.4. Proton defending. Missile should be somewhere. Chimango just launched another one, AIM-54. There it goes. So there goes the AIM-54. That thing we can see from Proton's screen. We can see the contrail. The 120 is 1.5 miles behind him. He's doing a slow barrel roll. That type of barrel roll is not illegal. Nice and slow. Nice and um, controlled. He's not just spinning in circles. 120 is now within half mile. 0.4 miles now. And he hit the ground. No. Bad news. Man. So two missiles. Maybe it was the AIM-54 that caused him to panic. I don't know. But trees win yet again. And we're down to two pilots for Dragon Squadron. So let's go back to the attack view. Look at the overall situation of what's left. And it's just Colmelio. Colmelio and Raposho. So is it Colmisho? Because it's the same L-L-O down here. Is that how I pronounce his name? Colmisho? Yeah, .NET. Certain barrel rolls are illegal. I don't know if the bug has been fixed, but it causes active missiles to just spaz out. It doesn't. They don't track correctly. They don't know what they're doing, and you can just spin rapidly and desync is caused and just doesn't work. So hopefully in the next patch, if it hasn't been fixed already, that is no longer an issue. But rapid induced AOA on a jet is not allowed. Slow barrel rolls are definitely okay. But rapid induced AOA is not. Suicide is better than having a Phoenix up your tailpipe? Maybe. Depends on if you like things coming up your tailpipe or not. AOA's not touched yet. I'm assuming Robski is talking about the uh, the bug. Okay. Makes sense. All right. So, stock of the situation. Chimango, Chueco, and Gandalf up here to the north. Fortinero down here to the south. Comicho, Comi, Comicho is getting flanked by Fortinero. Raposho. This is bending my mind. Not pronouncing these how my mind wants them to be pronounced. Um is breaking away. So everyone is hot. Gandalf's coming hot from ECV-56, and everybody is hot from Dragon Squadron. I anticipate many things happening here very soon. Let's hit play and see how things continue to shake out. Chueco, I think, is the man to watch coming in against Komisho. Hasn't launched anything yet. Dropping some chaff, I think, just to make sure. Oh, he did. He put a 120 out there. There it goes. And it is going to be coming in on... Let's grab it. There it is. So here's the 120. It is going to be coming in. I need to pause this to make sure I don't miss anything. So the 120 is coming in on Comisho. And he is not defending. That missile is two miles away. Look at it. Two miles. Let's even get the tack view in here. Let's zoom in. So here's the 120, here's Komisho, and he is descending, Mach 1, bad things are about to happen to Komisho's face. Play, split screen, here we go. 
give you a view here. So those Kamisho from the missile's point of view, and there is the missile from Kamisho's point of view. Play. Here we go. Missile incoming. Impact. Three, two, one. Smash! Right in Kamisho's face. He loses his right wing. Both of his horizontal stabs, and the ground is going to claim another victim. That is the third casualty for Dragon Squadron. Still, no losses for ECV-56. Roposho is the only one left. And here he is. One twenty being launched from him. Can't tell who it's on. Let's go back to tack view. Oh, sorry, wrong button. Let's go back to tack view and see. Aim fifty four being launched from Chimango. It's on to Rapoyo. Raposho. God, confusing. There it is. We can see its contrail coming in. Three miles. Looks like it got line of sighted. He's still hot. Realizes he's defeated that missile. Needs still needs to turn his lights off. Adjust tack view so we can get a better view. Raposho continuing to ingress here. Fortinero puts a 120 on him from the left side. There it is, five miles away. Is he going to be able to get away from it? 120 coming in from the front, too, from Gandalf. Is he going to line his side? Both of these missiles are inside two miles. Think he's going to get away from both of them. Neither of them are continuing to track, but he is now cold. Fortinero is still hot. Let's grab Fortinero's point of view now. So here's Fortinero coming in. Split screen, I think, is more apt. And multiple missiles coming in onto Raposho. And I don't know that he gets away from this one. It's coming in half mile. It's above him. 0.3 miles, 0.2 miles. Is he going to catch him? No. Barely misses him, so he's still alive. Another missile being launched. This one from inside three and a half miles. I think this is going to be all she wrote for Raposho. Let's go to his view. And he gets smashed coming over the hill. That is going to be at ECV-56. Slaughters Dragon Squadron without a single casualty. Man. So I guess I'm glad you enjoy it. It's tack view. It's I finally figured out a way to be able to manage it. My hotkeys are all they're all working. So I'm glad I finally figured it out. I'm glad it's working out for you and you're enjoying it. But you're talking about this view. Is this the view you're talking about? With tack view above and the four cameras down below? I think that's what you're talking about. We can also do this one. Boo! Tack view there with three other cameras. Oh, the whole thing. Okay, well, I appreciate that. The kind words are appreciated. Makes my heart flutter. Are they gonna have to RTB? That is the question. Let's fast forward here because nobody wants to sit and just watch these guys fly in straight lines. How far do they have to go? We are with Fortinero. He is here. How far does he have to go? He's gotta go back to Krimsk. 68 miles. Got to get you some 30, 3080s now. I think I need the 3090. I need the VRAM. My VRAM on my 2080 Ti is full. And they didn't make them RTB, so that's going to be it. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. We are done for the day. I need to check and see what the next matchup is going to be. Boom. Maybe if they would stop getting scalped. This is true. They are still expensive, and I don't know that my wife wants me to spend money on that because I'm spending lots of money anyway. Like, I bought a new wireless network. I bought uh, cameras for the house. I bought a new desk. I did some stuff for our theater. You know, there's tons of stuff going on, and it's just I don't know that she wants me to spend 1000 or so dollars on a new GPU. I want to build a new pit, dedicated pit for my flight sim rig because none of that stuff set up. That's got to come at some point, maybe um, after this season. It's just, there's there's so much stuff. So anyway, we just watched Dragon Squadron against ECV-56. Next match is going to be 36th against 64th. That's going to be tomorrow. And then Friday is going to be Toro Squadron taking on Taw. So we're back to Diamond League for two matches. And then we'll take a break on Saturday and Sunday. Then Monday, we will be again with Diamond League. Phoenix Task Force taking on Taw. And then Tuesday is going to be to Gold League, finally. Griffin Squadron taking on my squadron. And then Eclipse Task Force against Taw Wolfpack. Moltar says, can you give a quick shout of what your computer room looks like? Uh, what does my computer... No. <laughs> I don't have a picture of it right now. 
it's kind of small and not finished. Um, do you know how to fix the tack view not recording? Your tack view isn't recording or the Twitch isn't like you're not able to get real time telemetry. I think I fixed that. Real time telemetry should be working. If your tack view isn't reporting or recording, try and uninstall it. Blow away your scripts file in your save games. Make sure you back it up first. Blow it away and then reinstall TACView and see if that fixes it for you. When in doubt, restart, reinstall. That is the way. But anyway, guys, that is going to be all she wrote for today. We will be back tomorrow. Again, Diamond League, 36 taken on 64th in a 6v6 matchup. Not sure how that one's going to go. I got to roll with 64th because they've, they've been putting up some numbers. Um, so anyway, that's it for today. Until next time, which is going to be tomorrow, 1600 Zulu. Stay safe in those virtual skies, and we'll see you guys later. Have a good one.